Hey everyone, welcome back to Miss Mo, the storytelling show. I hope you're having a good day. Yo. Before I start my story today, I want to give a special Miss Mo shout out to a very special group of fourth graders just down the road at Eureka Elementary School. Hello, Mrs. Price's class. Tyrone requested a shout out for your class. And hey, what can I say? Can I say no to one of my most ardent fans on Miss Mo Monday with Mrs. Price's class? Heavens no! So hello and thank you for watching Miss Mo Show. All right, should we get going on our story? Today's story comes all the way from a tiny island just 90 miles south of Florida. You should look up it on look it up on a map. I'll wait. Did you find it? There it is. Just 90 miles south of Florida, a little island named Cuba. Lots of good music, lots of good food, and lots of good stories. And this is a story about a man named Bizarron and how he tricked the devil. Shall we tell the story? Here we go. Lap and clap. You know what to do. Let's do it. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go with Miss Mo. Two more. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go with Miss Mo. Last time. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go with Miss Mo. Shh. Now, Bizarron was a pretty nice fella. Not too hardworking, but not lazy. But he knew he needed work because he needed food to eat and a place to sleep. But he didn't have a job. And he was sitting on this big rock looking at the ocean thinking, oh, what am I going to do? I need to work. Where should I go? And he had some friends walk by. Bizarron, ¿qué pasa? What's going on? Bizarron, what are you doing? And he told them that he was sitting there thinking about where he could go to get a job. And they started to laugh. <laughs> Bizarron, we know a job for you. What do you mean, he says. Just down the road's the devil. And the devil is looking for someone to come work for him. You know, to cut wood and haul water and all that stuff. And Bizarron stands up and says, which way does he live? Well, then his friends stopped laughing. <laughs> Whoa. And it's, look, are you crazy? You can't work for the devil. Anyone who's ever gone to work for him has never been seen. Bisaron shrugged and said, just tell me where he lives. So they pointed him in the direction and Bisaron left to go down and see if the devil would hire him. He knocked on the door. Devil opened the door and sees Bisaron. Devil looks behind. ¿Qué pasa? ¿Qué quieres? What do you want? Bisaron says, I'm here to work. I heard you needed work. I'm here to help. The devil looked again behind Bisaron and says, there's only one of you. I have a lot of work. I have worked for 10, 20, maybe 50 men. You'll never be able to do it. Pisaron shrugged again, and he said, Oye, listen, I'm a good worker. I can do the work of 10, 20, maybe 50 men. Why don't you give me a shot? The devil agreed, welcomed Pisaron in, gave him some rice and beans for dinner, showed him where he would be sleeping, and said he would come the next morning at 5 a.m. to wake him up and go to work. Pisaron went to sleep with a full stomach and was excited for this opportunity. The next morning, 5 a.m., the devil was there shaking Bisaron awake. Levántate, levántate, get up, get up, get up. Ah, que quieres, que quieres, what do you want? And he opened his eyes, and there was the devil with two big buckets. And the devil says, oye, I have four kitchens in this house and ten bathrooms, and they all need water. So you need to go all day down to the river and bring me back buckets of water. Every kitchen and every bathroom needs water by the end of the day, or you're fired. Bisaron looks at the buckets and says, I don't need buckets to get you water. I need a shovel. A shovel? Why do you want a shovel? And Bisaron said, that's for me to know. But I need a shovel, not buckets. Well, the devil was curious, so he went and got a shovel, gave Bisaron the shovel, and Bisaron walked off. Well, two hours go by, no water. Three hours, four hours, no water. Finally, the devil is getting a little bit frustrated, so he walks in the direction that Bisaron had walked off in, and there he sees Bisaron digging a huge ditch, big enough that Bisaron could lay down in it, and he was heading in the direction of the house. ¿Qué estás haciendo? The devil says. What are you doing? And Bisaron says, look, if I came and fetched you water in a bucket, I'd have to do it every single day, but I'm just digging this ditch. I'm going to reroute the river, bring the river to your house, and then we can step out the door and get water whenever we want. Now, this sounded like a good idea, right? But the devil thought to himself, what kind of man have I hired? 
that's strong enough to change the path of a river? And he started to get a little bit nervous about this bisaron. It's too late, it's too late. We don't have time for this. Just bring a couple buckets of water quick and let's go in for dinner. Bisaron shrugged and said, okay. Followed the devil back in the house. They had some beans and rice. Bisaron went to bed, but the devil told him, I'm waking you up even earlier tomorrow. And he did. At four o'clock the next morning, the devil comes in. Levántate, levántate, levántate. Wake up, wake up. Oh, ¿Qué quieres, qué quieres? What do you want? Bisaron said. The devil said, oye, I have 15 fireplaces in this house. 15. And they all need to be filled with fresh firewood. And he thrust an axe toward Bisaron's face. Bisaron pushed the axe away. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I don't need an axe to get you firewood. I need rope. Rope? Rope. The longest rope you've ever seen in your life. I need the longest rope you have. The devil said, how are you going to use rope to get me firewood? Hey, that's for me to know. Where's the rope? The devil was curious, so he put the axe down and he went and got a big, 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 long, long, long rope. And he gave it to Bisaron. Bisaron emptied it over his shoulder and walked away. An hour goes by, no firewood. Two hours, three hours, four hours, no firewood. The devil's starting to get a little frustrated, so he walks off in the direction where Bisaron had left with the rope. And there he sees him, and he sees a rope going this way around the forest. And then on this side, he looked and there's coming Bisaron still holding the rope. And he's almost made a full loop with the rope. And the devil says, ¿Qué estás haciendo? What are you doing, Bisaron? I wanted firewood. Why are you putting rope around the trees? Bisaron said, Oye, listen, if I chopped you firewood and brought it to the house, I'd have to do that every single day. No, no, no. What I'm doing is I tied this rope all the way around the forest. Now I'm going to tie a knot in the middle and then I can hoist the whole forest up on my back. I'll come to your house and I'll drop the forest right by your front door. We'll have all the firewood we want. The devil was very nervous now. He looks at Bisaron and he looked at the forest and he looked at the rope. And he shook his head, no, 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 there's not enough time. Just grab a few sticks and come on, let's go, it's time for dinner. And on the way back, as Bisodon followed him, the devil thought, what kind of man have I hired? What kind of man can pick a whole forest up on his back? Ay, ay, ay. But then he had an idea. The next morning, he woke up Bisodon at three o'clock in the morning. Wake up, levántate, levántate. Ay, 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 it's so early. ¿Qué quieres? What do you want? The devil said, Oye, listen, on the other side of the island, they're having this huge throwing contest. Men from all over Cuba are going to the coast and throwing rocks as far as they can. Whoever throws the rock the farthest gets 1,000 gold pieces. So you're going to walk all the way across the island. You're going to throw the rock farther than anyone else can throw it, and then you will bring home the money. And if you make it home in time, I'll let you keep some of it. Go, go, go. He sat on shrugged, grabbed his packed lunch, and went on his way, walking all the way across the island. Well, he made it all the way across the island, and there was a beautiful beach, and all these big, strong men, they were throwing rocks 20 feet, 30 feet, 40 feet, 50 feet. Visadon looked at them, found a nice spot under a palm tree, shade, and the wind and the sand was cool, and he laid down, and he went fast asleep. An hour goes by, goes by, two, three, four, five, six, seven hours go by. <sighs> See, the devil is thinking, where is that man? He should be back by now with my money. Hmm. And so the devil quickly runs over across the island and he gets there and he sees all these big, strong men and they're throwing rocks and the contest is almost over and he's looking everywhere for Bisaron. And then he found him laying down under a tree asleep. Levantate, 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 wake up, wake up, wake up. Ay, que pasa? What's going on? What are you doing? And the devil said, what are you doing? You are supposed to have thrown a rock and won money and been home by now. Why are you sleeping under a tree? And Bisaron said, oye, I am not throwing a thing until they move those ships out there in the ocean. What ships? Bisaron points out and the devil looks and way, way, way out a mile out in the ocean, he sees the sails of three ships. And Bisaron says, look, if I throw a rock right now, I could hit one of those ships. I could sink one of those ships. 
I am not taking the risk that I could sink a ship and kill someone by one of my rocks. No, I am not throwing any rocks until they move those ships. Well, all the other people in the throwing contest and all the judges had come around listening to Bisaron, and they were looking out at the ship. And they looked at Bisaron, and they looked out at the ships, and they thought, no, he couldn't do that, right? Right? Nobody can, nobody can throw that far, right? But Bisaron looked pretty strong, and the devil was with him, so that must have made him pretty strong. And so the head judge said, nope, 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 you are disqualified. Anyone that can throw that far, that might sink a ship, you're out of the contest. And they wouldn't even let Bisaron throw. So Bisaron shrugged and headed home. The devil could barely walk home. His knees were hitting together like this. He was so nervous. What kind of man have I brought into my house that could throw a rock a mile and sink a ship? <gasps> no, no, no. This won't work. He has to go. But the devil only knew one way to get rid of him. So that night, before they went to bed, after they had their beans and rice, the devil said to Bisaron, you know what? It's a beautiful night out tonight. Why don't we sleep on the porch? There's a bunk bed on the porch and we can sleep in the cool wee breeze from the ocean. It'll be nice. So Bisaron drugged and said, okay. So they went out to go to bed. But as Bisaron was getting into bed, he noticed that the devil had some big bulges under his shirt. And he thought, something's going on here. So he lay down and he started to snore as if he was fast asleep. Now Bisaron was on the bottom bunk and the devil had climbed up to the top bunk. Now when Bisaron could hear that the devil was fast asleep, Bisaron quiet, quietly, he climbed out of his bed and he went and he sat in a chair so he could watch the devil and see what he did. But he kept snoring. Well, the devil was listening. And when he could hear that Bisaron was snoring, he leaned over with the rock and he dropped it right on the bed where Bisaron had been asleep. Bisaron saw the rock and he went, ouch! Oh, a mos mosquito just bit me! Ouch! And the devil, <gasps> oh no. The devil dropped another rock. Boom! Ouch! Another one. Oh, these mosquitoes. Ouch! And then Bisaron quickly got back into bed. And the devil is sitting there and his teeth are chattering. <laughs> and then in the morning, the sun comes up and he looks down and there's Bisaron and he's getting out of bed. Ay, 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 the mosquitoes were so bad here. I had two big mosquitoes land right on my head. Ouch! And the devil drops to his knees. Ay, ay, ay! Please, Bisaron, please, will you please leave my house and never come back, ever? The devil wanted nothing to do with a man who rocks bounced off of like that. He knew he was no match for Bisaron. Bisaron shrugged his shoulders and said, I don't know, I like this job and I need the money. The devil said, no, I will give you a donkey with two big bags of gold, as much as you can carry, just please go away and never come back. Bisaron shrugged and said, hmm, okay. So the devil gave him a nice burro, a donkey, and two big bags of gold, and Bisaron headed on his way. Oh, the devil was so relieved. He went down to have breakfast, and there was his wife. And his wife said, what is going on? We have not had water or firewood for the last three days. Where's that servant you hired? He is worthless. And the devil said, oh, I got rid of him. And listen to this. This man was strong enough to dig a new river. And he was strong enough to pick up the forest on his back. And he was so strong, they wouldn't even let him compete in the throwing contest. And last night, rocks bounced off his head like mosquito bites. He is gone. You are so lucky. I got rid of him. The devil's wife looked at him and said, you are the biggest fool I've ever seen. That man has tricked you. You need to go get him right now. And the devil thought to himself, maybe she's right. And so he headed off in search of Bisaron. Now Bisaron, as he's walking along, riding his donkey, enjoying, thinking of what he's going to do with all that gold, he kept, check, kept checking over his shoulder to see if the devil was coming behind him. Sure enough, he, him, he saw him coming. So he thought fast. 
He went and he hid the donkey in the bushes off the side of the road so no one could see it. Then he laid down in the middle of the road and he stuck his feet up like this, straight up towards the sky. The devil come, came along and he see, saw Bisodon laying on the ground with his feet up towards the sky. The devil said, ¿Qué estás haciendo? What are you doing? And Bisodon said, You know what? That donkey you gave me is the most stubborn animal I've ever met. He wouldn't do anything I said. So I kicked him up into heaven. The devil looked at the heavens and he looked at Bisodon. You kicked, you kicked the donkey into heaven? Yeah, but, but, and then the devil was shaking. He could barely speak, but, but if you kick the donkey up into heaven, why are you laying on the ground? And Bisodon said, well, I want to be here to catch him when he falls back down. Then I'll show him who's boss. The devil didn't say another word. He simply said, and ran away, and ran and ran and ran. He got back to his house, and his wife said, what are you doing? Where's that servant? Why are you, what's going on? Where is he? And the devil said, I, I, he kicked, he kicked the donkey into heaven, to heaven. And that is the last place I want to be. So I want to never see Bisaron again. And lucky for the devil, he never did. And Bisaron and his donkey lived for a long, happy time with all the devil's gold. <laughs> Bisaron's pretty clever, isn't he? Miss Mo, Miss Mo, Miss Mo has got to go to more Miss Mo. Ms. Mo, Ms. Mo has got to go. Last time, Ms. Mo, Ms. Mo, Ms. Mo has got to go. Bye! And remember, if you or your class would like a shout out on Ms. Mo, then please comment below. Tell me your name. Tell me your teacher's name. Tell me where you go to school. And the next episode, maybe it'll be a hello to you in your class. Tell somebody a story today. Bye! Have a great day!